Hello and welcome to the big picture. The debt ceiling crisis in the United States has reached a climax with less than 12 hours to go before the government defaults on its debt for the first time ever. President Obama faces the dubious distinction of overseeing this default which has never happened before. Despite having faced similar standoffs in the past, the last being in 2011, the government which was partially shut down two weeks back putting about 8 lakh government workers on furlough has defied a resolution as both President Obama and the Republicans, especially in the House of Representatives, have stood their ground. The Republicans are opposing the Obama health care and demanding a major cut in it and have refused to pass the budget. Meanwhile, the debt ceiling crisis is on them. The U.S. currently owes $16.96 trillion and its debt is rising every second. The limit of debt, which is currently $16.76 trillion, has already been crossed in May. If the Congress doesn't manage to approve the raising of the debt ceiling, the payment debt default will occur. How will the crisis be averted or will America face the ignominy of defaulting on debts and all its terrible consequences? We will discuss all this today with Shiv Shankar Mukherjee, former ambassador, Professor Christopher Raj of the Center for American Studies, JNU, Pramit Pal Chaudhary, foreign editor, Hindustan Times, and on the phone line from Washington, D.C. is Chidanand Rajgata, foreign editor and U.S. correspondent for the Times of India. Welcome to all of you. Chidanand, I would like to come to you first. Things are really, we, yes. we just have, what, about 12 hours before uh, the, the crisis, you know, it becomes a reality? Yes, T minus 15 hours, as I say. Okay. And, uh, you know, is there is there any hope of any resolution happening at all? Or, or are the, uh, you know, the congressmen still still standing their ground, especially the Republican stand, uh, congressmen, and what is the president doing? Well, yes, there is some hope. There is a sliver of uh, uh, hope. There's a small opening in the sense that uh, the, the congressmen, the Republican congressmen who can do it in the House of Representatives, they are uh, in complete disarray. There is so much, uh, in our system we call it dissent, um, and a division within the party that they can't uh, put together uh, a resolution on the floor of the House. They, can, they, they won't allow uh, Speaker Boner, who is uh, the head of the um, uh, Republican uh, Party, the Speaker, uh, to go through with it in the House. But uh, what's happening is all the action is shifted to the Senate. Right. Uh, and the way they can do it is the Republicans and Democrats uh, can, uh, you know, push together a proposal in the Senate where Democrats have a majority. Right. And then they can throw it to the House where, where uh, once the Senate sends it to the House and uh, Boehner puts it on the floor, uh, the Democrats and uh, some supporting Republicans in the House can get a, a resolution through. So basically this is a legislative ledger domain where the Senate takes the lead, uh, which means uh, the Republicans get less of a uh, deal than they were hoping for, uh, and they push it through. But it, it requires a lot of legislative jugglery, I'm told, and uh, it will take some time. So it's possible that they may go past the deadline technically. Now, you have to remember that uh, the, the midnight deadline tonight uh, is, is, is a technical deadline. Uh, it, it's, it's the time when, uh, when US, uh, the borrowing authority of the United States uh, ends. It doesn't mean uh, U.S. goes broke. They, they still have some money in the kitty. We are yeah. told that it's about $30 billion, and there will be some revenues which will keep coming in. So they can pay the bills for the next few days, um, you know, possibly a week or two. Uh, but, but this is a devastating blow to U.S. prestige. Absolutely. Uh, and that is the most amazing part. Even if they resolve this, uh, if they kick the can down the road and say, all right, we'll raise the debt ceiling uh, to go on till next February, uh, you know, Chidanand, the government shut down. Chidanand, and so on. Chidanand, but, yes. Chidanand, my question is: No, let's not go ahead. Let's look at what is happening now. You said mm -hmm. that the, the 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 action has moved to the Senate. The Senate, there seems to be some hope where the Democrats are in the majority and all that. Yes. But even if the if the Senate manages to pass it and sends it to the House, do you think Speaker Boner will? will be able to put the resolution in the House because, you know, we, we, are, uh, we are being told and we are reading about how difficult it is also for him because, you know, he, he, will be, 
he'll be he'll be challenging he'll he'll be challenged by his own people oh absolutely uh, the the fact is he will be challenged by his own people uh, like i said right at the you know, top of this um, comment that the republicans and are in disarray but um, uh, bainer is uh, more inclined to deal making and bainer is less of a sort of uh, right. you know uh, extremist in this situation so it's possible that he might uh, take the risk as it is uh, there is a division in the party he might you know go ahead because if he doesn't the, the republicans really risk getting an absolute hammering in 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 the uh, in the uh, upcoming congressional elections next november um it's fine for the 30 or 40 tea party members who are in really you know solid white you know redoubts which have been redrawn and gerrymandered they'll get through but the rest of the republican party will will get killed um <laughs> you know in terms of electoral uh, oh. you know adversity so they the banner um, the sense we get as banner is inclined to go ahead and table what the senate uh, sends him uh, and they can get it uh, through the Senate. But the larger thing is, see, all this is very difficult for uh, to explain to all your viewers because all this is legislative, you know, jugglery. Yeah. The, the big picture here really is the, the question of U.S. prestige. Absolutely. For, for, we'll for come years to that. and for decades, for no, no, years we'll come and decades, to that. this is a country Chandu. which has actually preached to the rest of the world how Absolute. to run a democracy. Absolutely. We'll come to that. No, no, such Chandu. a mess. Chidu, sorry, we'll, yeah. come to, we'll come to that aspect a little later. Yeah. Please stay on. Mm -hmm. Let me get uh, Shushankar Mukherjee in here. Uh, Mr. Mukherjee, Republicans are really taking it, uh, you know, to the extreme. How, how I mean, if, if as Chidaran says that there are these 30, 40 Tea Party members who are, who, who seem to be, you know, have a, who seem to have taken it to the brink, but, you know, the party just doesn't have any control over them. Well, it's, it's more than just a question of control. You know, I mean, I'm in full agreement with uh, my old friend Chidu, uh, as I have been for more than a quarter of a century in my assignments, beginning with my assignments in Washington. Uh, if, if I might just take one minute to explain to your viewers uh, a little bit of the background of this, thing, right? Because one has to, I think they have to understand what is this, what is this, this crisis? huge crisis of a debt ceiling? Absolutely. See, uh, every government borrows. There's not a single government that runs on a tight household budget kind of right. thing. And uh, before 1917, uh, the, 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 the government had to go to Congress for every single time it borrowed money. Right. And, this uh, was during the First World War. During the First World War. And because of the conditions created by the war and, you know, the decisions that had to be taken, the expenses of the war, there was an, an act passed, uh, the Liberty Bond Act, I think, which uh, instead, of, uh, instead of insisting that the government goes to Congress each time it borrows, it, 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 it gave it, a broad it, it ceiling. Ceiling, ceiling is, uh, yes, so whenever, yeah. now, and since then, whenever the government needs to borrow money, it borrows money. Right. There's a ceiling to it. Right. Uh, and when the ceiling is not enough, uh, the government has always managed to raise the debt ceiling right. so that government continues to function smoothly. Right. I mean, the grease that runs any government is money. Uh, so and right now, that ceiling is 16 that trillion dollars. That ceiling is about to be breached. This is no, it has already been breached, 16.7 trillion yeah, dollars. It has the, already been breached in May, yeah. and they have been what the, they call an extraordinary measure. That yes, taken the, the president was allowed extraordinary measures. To, for for essential expenditure. Right. So that is the background of Absolutely. this thing. Now uh, the the thing is this time, I this think standoff seems to be on the uh, all about the Obama health care. Yes, this is the background uh, also that needs to be considered because on the one side the the Republicans are saying we want fiscal discipline. Yes. But frankly, this is pure politics. Right. This is Obama wants Obamacare to be his biggest domestic legacy. Right. It, it, that's a very well-known fact. Right. And a tremendous amount of work has gone into it. Uh, traditionally, the Democrats have painted themselves as a more compassionate party. Absolutely. And, that, and the Republicans have painted themselves as a much more disciplined uh, right. party that, uh, you know, that, that, that is willing to take tough decisions. Now, here, they've honed in on Obamacare. Uh, and uh, if I were a Republican, I would have chosen the same subject because another thing that you have to remember is that the costs of medical care in the U.S. 
are outrageous. Absolutely. So and, the, the and amount no, of even, money even, involved. Even, even a middle class person doesn't, sometimes is no, not able to. Insurance afford. pays for it, but frankly, it, it's, a, it's a system that is mind bogglingly, uh, you know, dense. Uh, in the sense, uh, you know, you have you, you have malpractice suits that where courts award millions of dollars in damages and right. shuts down a doctor's practice. Right. So a doctor usually has to pay more than a hundred thousand dollars in malpractice insurance. Right. So you have here a meaty subject on which to hammer a lame duck president with. Uh, he is into his second term. Right. On the other hand, Obama doesn't have to worry about re-election. Right. So there's a there's a kind of balance there as well. So here you have a classic political situation where the Republicans have got hold of an issue which they thought they would hammer the Democrats with. Uh, at the same time, this business of default comes up. Obama has said he will not negotiate with a gun to his head. The Republicans uh, insisted, the Tea Party leading it, right. that the, 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 the staunchest conservatives and the Republicans held firm. Two weeks ago, as you mentioned in your introduction, the thing fell apart and uh, government virtually shut down. I mean, many departments shut down. And uh, so you have the present situation where now you have a few hours left before the U.S. goes into default. The Republicans are worried, Chidu is absolutely right here, they're in disarray, they're worried because uh, poll after poll has shown that the people are getting fed up with the Republicans and their brinkmanship. Right. And there will uh, be an extremely unpopular party if things fall apart uh, fiscally. So they but worked out a compromise. But, but that doesn't seem to be bothering them because, you know, the, the way it they does bother them. They worked out a compromise. A, a large number of Republicans in the House worked out a compromise which would allow borrowing till February 15th and actual money to be disbursed till January. Right. Uh, the compromise was further shortened. But the, apparently Obama is not accepting well, it. The, 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 the thing was shortened to December 15th right. to accommodate the conservative Republicans, the more conservative Republicans, uh, to which the president has replied that he uh, is, this is tantamount to ransom. Holding, holding, not holding to them ransom. to ransom and he says that yes. what, the job which you need to do, I'm not going to pay a ransom for it. That's right. So this is, this is where the standoff and the brinkmanship is, is occurring. Uh, yes, if the default takes place, it will be a huge blow to America's prestige uh, uh, among its allies and the rest of the and, world. And, and but more worrying than that, uh, sitting here in, in India, is that it will. it's not just a question of American prestige. The world has not fully recovered at all from the, from the 2008 financial tsunami. Absolutely, and we can, we can, we can and, be heading uh, towards that. And with this kind of thing happening, and, and let's not forget that the U.S. is by far the largest economy in the Absolutely. world. Absolutely. You're talking of a maybe a return to recession. Absolutely. So in fact, some uh, some some American analysts and all have are are talking about if if this continues, then it can it would be worse than the the great uh, you know uh, depression. depression in the 1930s. 1930s. Anyway, you you think that the that this pressure, uh, uh, Professor Christopher Raj, of the of the people, you know, if you see all the opinion polls and uh, which are coming in the last few days. The, uh, the Republicans are really down in the dumps, you know, 70 percent rating, 70 percent right. opposing what they're doing. But do you think that they're now will they will be forced to come, come to a, uh, See, some well, kind of a, uh, you know? I, I, the public opinion is really building up. Yes. And uh, I was watching CNN, the outside, you know, the military centers from Normandy to Philippines. Right. Uh, the people are walking around, the family is affected, the soldier may get his salary, right. but the family is affected. Then the latest emotional thing they have stuck is uh, the war symmetries where people are given and the war symmetry in, from Normandy to Philip. So this, uh, because you raise the issue of public opinion. Right. So I'm sure uh, the people and the one of, uh, I heard five voices saying we are terribly upset by the Republican position. We will never vote for them. So, the, the, I mean, you're, you're talking of military. The military active pay and veterans benefits this is $12 billion and they're due by November 1st. That's right. So something is paid. The other 8 lakh is nothing is paid. They are just going on without. 
uh, <laughs> I don't know whether the se social security will provide them the option, <laughs> one doesn't know. So it is a really uh, tough thing. Uh, the issue is, you know, uh, the Tea Party is not worried because they, they come from very secure secular constituencies and they come from Texas, they, they come from uh, the Middle West and uh, you know the stand they take is acceptable to the people to, to their to their constituency constituency second there is no uh, congressional election in uh, in this year right they have to only face next year and uh, this is their stand but the other republican as you have said are really wavering right and they want to work out some compromise on this issue okay but the thing that you know what we have parliamentary democracy as the option right. the american president doesn't don't have, have. we will come to that actually yeah. you know we, we we should we should this is the right time in fact to compare uh, indian democracy with the with the american democracy the first and the second largest uh, uh, pramit yeah pramit you know where do you think this is all heading do you think that the that the congress will be able to work out some kind of a solution in the next next 12 hours 13 hours that they have uh, or do you think that we are going to see something very unprecedented which has happened, which has never happened before? Well, I suspect what we'll end up with is what is called a technical default. Okay. In other words, even last year, America did actually default on its debt. Right. Because by the time the U.S. Congress passed the final debt ceiling uh, compromise, uh, it was actually too late in right. the sense that the U.S. Treasury desk bench that handles payments had gone home, and when they came back, they then fulfilled the last, the first set of batch of payments. But in Amer America, had effectively defaulted on a few billion dollars worth of treasury bonds. Uh, it and didn't matter too much. The interest rate on treasury bonds rose by 0 0.6 percent. It's, it's uh, said, it is said that about 20 billion dollars more interest has been paid so far because of that default. Because of that. And we may go th that far. I was just, my, my sense when I'm talking to people in Washington is that another technical default may take place. Uh, and again, America will pay some few billion dollars extra. It's not a major cost for them. Um, but as, as was being pointed out, this actually will, though, even if they do come to an agreement, it seems that it will only push the agreement, uh, it will solve the problem till January, right. and then the whole game starts all over again. Okay. Uh, Chid Chidanan? No. Yes. yes, now coming, co now coming to, the, to the effect, what uh, Pramit also thinks that there will be a technical, at least a technical default. If it is even a technical default, what will be the impact on, on the on the on the American on the American system on how the on how the world looks at looks at America and most importantly what kind of an impact it will have on the global economic system itself? Well, as we all know, and uh, I think as one of your guests pointed out, uh, the U.S. is really the world's largest uh, uh, economy, and right. uh, the rest of the world, uh, you know, the economy of rest of the world is tied to. American shoelaces. Um, and what this does is, first of all, regardless of, of you know, all the technicalities about, you know, default, I, I heard it talking, uh, say, yesterday, I think the best line I heard was, forget about downgrades by rating agencies and defaults. He said, we have been downgraded in the eyes of the world. Right. Uh, and that is very true because for, for, like I said, for years and decades, this is a country which has lectured, you know, the rest of the world on how to run their affairs, Absolutely. how to be a democracy, how to, you know, balance things, how to get things done. And it's astonishing that right now, when the rest of the world is looking at them, they, are, they have made a real mess of it. Right. Um, as to the actual uh, effects, the entire world, you know, runs on the dollar. Dollar is Absolutely. a central currency. It is the currency. It's a default currency. It's a reserve currency. Right. Every major transaction in the world is dollar-centric. If India, any country wants to buy oil or gold or commodity, minerals, you know, even countries which which don't have dollar as a currency use 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 the dollar to trade with other countries. Right. Um, and here you have a situation where you are unable to rely, you know, on a on the you know country of which dollar is is the central uh, currency. Um, and uh, much of the world's economy, much of the functioning of the world is premised on the stability and reliability of the United States you know, on it being a, a solid, stable uh, power. And this has been true for a century. And now 
you find that uh, the political system in in U.S. is in complete disarray. It's a mess. Uh, they're unable to resolve this, you know, financial and budgetary issues. And worst, they're not even um, fixing it. It's not a one-shot fix. They keep kicking the can down the road. It's a few months here and a few months there. And even if they resolve it now, we, we know that this uh, crisis will revisit in January or February. Right. And so it, it is enervating for the rest of the world. And um, they, within America, people are already talking about yesterday. I heard an incredible description of the Tea Party. Um, Bill Richardson, who's a f former uh, congressman and governor, uh, said they are the American Taliban. <laughs> so you see how far, you know... We are, uh, we are hearing, we are hearing yeah. all... Ca it, they're calling it the economic Armageddon, you know, in, you know the, which, we are, we are, which we are staring at. Uh, yes, uh, yes. Absolutely. And so, and so the, the, the fundamental point here is trust in the United States has, is going down rapidly. Trust in the dollar is going down rapidly. Uh, and I, I just don't see uh, the political setup here uh, working to arrest this uh, decline in trust. Uh, and therefore, the centrality of the U.S. dollar as the world's currency and the primacy of the United States as uh, the seriously, and power is, is seriously under question. is seriously under threat. Okay, uh, Mr. Mukherjee, you you know, uh, f facing this kind of a situation, what is it that that the Republicans can do, and what are the concessions that that Obama can give to them? Because you know they are looking for concessions. They obviously they now everybody will be looking for face savers to end this crisis. Well, certainly, I mean, what, uh, there has to be some kind of result. An economy the size of America's is not going to sit back and do nothing. There will be a compromise. Uh, and the word is compromise. Exactly. Each side will have to, uh, inch by inch, given a little. A technical default, as Jiddu said, means really not much. No, but uh, that, that would only mean like that you're know, postponing like it for pay. a few days. Pardon? Mm -hmm. Postponing it for a few Postponing days. Postponing it for a few days doesn't really matter. Government pay payments are always delayed. Go to any petrol station in Delhi and you'll find the chap complaining bitterly about unpaid government bills. <laughs> I don't know whether it's the same thing in America. Well, <laughs> government payments... We are used to uh, it. I don't know whether they are used to you it. You know, a few days really doesn't matter. But let me enter a caveat here. You know, uh, have, having served there, Americans uh, are like Indians in one sense. We love criticizing ourselves. We love wearing a hair shirt. And uh, we love the use of hyperbole. The American economy, let me assure you, and I'm no economist, but uh, uh, I know this for a fact, is not about to collapse. Yes, it will take a hit on its prestige. Yes, there'll be all sorts of newspaper articles and analysts who will say, who will sneer at the U.S. for uh, its high and mighty attitude, whereas its house is hollow and that sort of thing. The Americans will shrug it off because the sheer size of the economy, American productivity, uh, its its innovative skills but, but, haven't but disappeared. What, but what about what about the what about the effect on the morale? It, it, it's the morale well, is going to be affected the, very the, badly. The, it's the, already the, been affected. Let me give you an example on the morale question. In 2008, uh, the the financial crisis the world faced actually began in the United States right. with the subprime crisis and the mortgages right. and so on. Uh, they did they, what they, they called, still they did something which the rest of Europe followed. But they have not recovered from it fully. Yes, not, not fully, but they were, you know, most of the world has not. Uh, Greece and it, half of Europe is, in fact, in a much worse position. But what did they do? They, uh, I mean, this is the first time I heard that phrase, quantitative easing, which was followed immediately by the UK and other countries in right. Europe. Now, what is quantitative easing? I asked an expert, a bank, I mean, a banker about this. Quantitative easing is printing money. <laughs> now, we are talking here of, of course, uh, the need for, uh, I, I don't know what the need is at the moment, though the ceiling is $16.7 trillion. But you are, uh, the, the, the first stimulus announced by the U.S. at the time of uh, the financial crisis in 2008 was just a shade less than $750 billion. Absolutely. The capacity of the U.S., to claw its way out of a financial crisis is there. Okay. I anyway, still maintain anyway, but, it's, a, it's more a political crisis okay, it's, than it an is, economic it, it one. Indeed, it indeed is a political crisis which has led to the economic crisis. Professor, Professor Christopher Raj, yeah, I, would, think, yes. I would say, you know, 
the Democrats, as uh, uh, Ambassador Mukherjee was mentioning. See, it all began with uh, Johnson also. He great society program. And we, he are, we are running out of time. We, I, so, you know, uh, the point is, Ob will Obama give concession, concession. on his Obama case? Yes. I doubt, because the bill was passed in uh, 2010. 11, it got enacted. Right. And he won the campaign. He won the, the campaign. election that, campaign. Yeah, that, so uh, he can't go in history that the man who enacted, but couldn't implement. Absolutely. Pr Pramit, Pramit, you think that, you know, you, do you think that after this crisis, you, or during what, during what, or as of now, what is happening there, is there, is there some kind of a, debate or discussion going on in, in, in U.S. About the, about the political system itself? We've had this political system for over 200 years. Exactly. And they've, they've had uh, this Montesquieu structure of a, of a deliberately designed to have the executive, the legislature, and the judiciary uh, at cross purposes with each other. Right. That will remain. I think the, the real question is that you had created over that 200-year period uh, a political establishment that worked closely within itself, that the right. Republicans and the Democrats. The 2008-2009 global financial crisis created the Tea Party movement, which mm. can be crudely called a working class uh, revolt against the establishment. And it des it's, and it's fractured the, one, of the big, the, one of the biggest national parties, the Republicans. Uh, and I think the real issue is, will the next, next year, November, uh, and potentially the midterm election after that, and because of this crisis, purge this working class revolt uh, against the establishment from the political system, in which case America then will revert, if you wish, back to what, it, uh, what existed beforehand. And I think that's what this is really going to be all about. Okay. Uh, okay. Chido, Chido, you think that there, there, there is... A is there, is there any rethink, is there any debate, not rethink really, a, a debate about the system itself or, you know, the, any reforms to the system, how, see, the, the kind of uh, uh, bipartisanship which is needed for the, in these kind of situations just doesn't, is not prevailing in the last few years, at least in the last decade, there have been several such standoffs. You think that the Americans at some point of time will, will have to start rethinking about their systems itself? Uh, I don't think so. I, I, there's absolutely no talk about uh, changing the system. I think many Americans believe that this is actually a you know finely tuned you know balance of power uh, thing, which is probably good for the country. You know, there's there's why there's that's the other way of looking at it. Uh, one of your guests said, you know, President Obama won the election, so why should he compromise? Absolutely. Uh, and this uh, speaker Bo uh, Beno was asked this, and he said, well, we won the election too because the Republicans retained the House of Representatives. So if the people, in their wisdom, you know, it's it's like our politics in some sense that uh, you know people don't mind giving a fractured verdict you know coalition governments and they expect politicians to be sensible enough to uh, to compromise but but the bottom line here is look at the end of the day this is this is still uh, you know and and it's a complex uh, country with a complex political uh, you know legislative system rather than a political system the political system is very simple two party um, so we are now actually looking at whether it can be three party system that is one change that uh, people you know look at um, but uh, the big picture is that, uh, you know, somebody, I think a Briton once said that uh, you can always trust the Americans to do the right thing after trying everything else. <laughs> and right now they're trying everything else. So, so now that they're still not done with trying everything else, so we'll, we'll have to wait and watch. Okay, uh, last words to you, Mr. Mukherjee. Just, just Very one quickly. fundamental point. I mean, you were talking about, uh, you know, how a parliamentary democracy like India handles yes. its major crisis. Exactly. And we are going through a mini crisis at the moment. But, we, the, and, but the budgets always get passed. Yes, but, you see, the founding fathers of the American Constitution, I think, had a very, uh, very wise vision. So the, the, the system of checks and balances creates standoffs like this, yes. but ensures, uh, at the end of the day, uh, a lack of irresponsibility, whereas once you have a government like we have in parlementary democracy, it can waste as much money as We don't know whether it's lack of irresponsibility you're talking about. <laughs> if we completely run out of time, sir. Lack of irresponsibility. We don't know. We'll wait so and watch how... Just to complete it. How, just to complete it. Yeah, very quickly, sir. The, the founding fathers gave Congress the budget. 
and the president the veto. Right. So this is the... Uh, no, no, we are, uh, <laughs> that's fine, but the problem is that, as you said earlier, the lack of responsibility, we'll see how responsible or irresponsible the, the Americans will be and what kind of an impact it will have on the, on the world. We'll have to wait and watch. Thanks to all my guests, Chidanand Rajgatta from Washington, D.C., Shushankar Mukherjee, Professor Christopher Raj, and uh, Pramit Pal Chaudhary. Please keep watching. We'll come back with another issue on the big picture, same time tomorrow.